What's up guys, it's Awana Turtle, and today we are doing our first Yu-Gi-Oh! opening. We have a box of Savage Strike, which is the newest set, and Yu-Gi-Oh! The Yu-Gi-Oh! game and me I do have some history. Uh, however, we have been on like a 15 year break, and I do want to say that uh, like 15 years ago things were much simpler. Uh, cards that I remember were things like Man Eater Bug, Flip Summon, Destroy a Monster, um, and things have been gotten much more complicated and like the text for some of these cards is just like they're like walls of text in the box. So I was looking at some of the big hits in this set and it's like Pot of Extravagance is like uh, discard six cards from your extra deck and then do some math to draw two cards and then you can't draw anymore at the end for the rest of your turn. It's surprisingly complicated but I am excited to get back into it um, and we're going to start with this set. So let's jump into the other view. Here we go. And just want to start by opening the box. I, actually, I guess there's not. Don't need to worry about doing like damage drain. I don't think the boxes themselves are really important. So I do like how compared to like Pokemon, I feel like the box is very small. Um, you know, there's 24 packs and they do have nine cards. Uh, so it's not like it's not like Pokemon Japanese set where it's because there's significantly less cards. But really excited about getting back into this and let's see if we can't get some good pulls. So if you are here um, to see the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff and you uh, just found our channel, welcome. Uh, so we do a lot of trading card games, uh, primarily focused around Pokemon, however we do splash in some Magic the Gathering and now Yu-Gi-Oh. So welcome, hope you enjoy your stay. Um, if you do enjoy that content, hit that like button and if you're new, hit that subscribe button for future content and let's get going. So I'm not sure if there's any kind of pack trick, so we'll probably just go um, through the cards and we'll, we'll speed up as we go. All right, so we got an orchestrated release, um, Time Thief Flyback, Unisong Tuning, Prank Kids. Not, not sure about the Prank Kids yet, uh, about how that uh, archetype works. All right, so we got Trickstar Band Secret Guitar, and then a Guardian and Drake. So these cards do have a at least a super rare and then a regular rare. And I do like this set because they're, the regular rare actually does have some value in that Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. So uh, I, I feel like a lot, uh, a lot of games, they don't do that enough where there's it's not just on like the most rare card and stuff like that. All right, so let's see. We got a Sharanui Style Solemnity, Child's Play, uh, Catchy Eve Level 2. I feel like some of these are hard to read. And Simmer and then Shiranui Squire. Oh, and there we go. We got the Salaman Great uh, Sunlight Wolf. Want to see if we can get a couple of these. I'm not sure if uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh cards, like how often there's like dupl duplication and we're getting the same rare multiple times. Um, but this is probably one of the few times that you want to do so. So for the cards that we're hitting, we already mentioned that Pot of Extravagance, and then the other one would be that Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. Uh, so I think it's funny the the naming. Uh, they, getting pretty uh pretty wild so we got a next looks like it's a um elemental heroes kind of thing or i did see neos in there so as far as uh the Yu-Gi-Oh show goes i did watch it like the original um however it always bothered me then we got into the game and it always bothered me that they didn't really follow the rules and they kind of did once like battle city started but uh, I, I when i sometimes when i rewatch i think there was still some stuff that they're pretty loose on um, but then compared to the GX series, I really like that one because uh, I think they still did like 4,000 HP, but other than that, they were playing by the rules. Uh, so we do have a World Legacy Guard Dragon. I'm not sure if that's any good, but it is a ultra rare. So you can tell by, um, people not familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh, it's, it's a foil and the uh, words are gold as well, where if it's just foil, that's a super rare. And then if the words, if it's just the words that are um, shiny, then it's just a regular rare. Uh, and then the secret rare is pretty easy to identify because it's all uh, it's foil, the words are shiny, and there's the foil pattern is kind of like a diagonal, they have like diagonal lines. So it's pretty easy to recognize. And my understanding is that there's usually two secret rares per box. And it almost seemed like you can expect one on each side of the box. So hopefully we hit, we should get at least one. All right, let's see what we got. Orchestrated release again. Time Thief Flyback, and then a Guard Dragon 
Ag... Agarpin? Agarpin? I'm not sure if that's any good, to be honest. And then a Hyper Psych... Psychic Riser. Anything else? Alright, so now we'll probably start going a little bit faster. Um, through the packs. <clears throat> looking mainly for that... What uh, Secret Ultra or super rare we get as well as the rare because we are looking for those Salmon Great Sunlight Wolves. Alright, so it's just not sure how to do this. I don't even even for the commons it's not like I want to avoid damaging the cards. So we got Thunderclap Monk and then a Charmer Ablaze. But I think uh, as far as growing up, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh was the game. Pokemon was something that we, we probably spent more time collecting and like trading and stuff like that. But I think Yu-Gi-Oh by far we played much more. Uh, ooh, Psychonic we, uh, Wield... Wielder. <laughs> and so, um, is that a secret rare? I, no, I thought it might be, but it looks like it's just an ultra rare. So this is one of the better hits. And so, like, if you just look at these two cards, like, look at all that text. Then we got a Lapis Dragon for the rare. But yeah, they just have huge walls of text. I'm, I'm very curious, like, what size font they have to use, just because there's so many words. Alright, let's go on to the next pack. Child's Play, Shirinui, and then Fateful Hour, followed by a Dark Factory. And um, it's, I was trying to ramp up on all like the mechanics, and some of them, most of them seem pretty straightforward. The pendulum one is very different. Um, although I feel like when when people talk about the meta, I feel like pendulum is not always up there. There's a lot of like the link stuff that seems to be dominating. Um, although there is like the XYZ or XYZ um, synchro. Uh, now these links that uh, were the cards you can see right here, like. They, they have arrows pointing to different spaces on the game board, and then it can do special effects to those. It's very surprisingly complicated. Uh, although when I do watch things like uh, videos where people are actually playing, it seems like all like the mechanics, like when you combine it, it just gets like super broken where you have uh, all these different like OTKs. Um, Solomon Great Violet Chimera. Ooh, that art. I do like think that the arts are pretty cool um, consistently. They're very... You know, they still manage to impress and they have very different um, styles between the archetypes, between like the Performer Pal stuff, which is almost like, it's like a circus kind of thing. Um, the prank kids and different stuff like that. The Some of the stuff from like the show, like the heroes, things like that. Alright, so let's see. We got Time Thief, Shiranui, and then a Trickstar, Devaradis. Followed by a detonate the leader. Okay. Salmon great, Sharanui. But I do like how they continue to add support for like older stuff. So even like the classic blue eyes, they have added over historically just so much support where I think um, obviously there will be decks that are best in the metagame, however, everything kind of can be uh, in my in my understanding is can be uh, made to work. Alright, so we have Guard Dragon LP and then Guard Dragon Shield. So, I'm not familiar with that Guard Dragon, Dragon archetype, so I'll have to look into that a little bit. Uh, but some of them are cool, like I think the Sky Strikers look pretty cool. Uh, so, there you guys have it. That's our first Yu Gi Oh! opening. Oh, it just occurred to me, I need to get different size sleeves now. <laughs> just because all my stuff has been for Magic and uh, Pokemon. So, for the first part of this first box, we got uh, two good hits in the Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. And then the Psychic Wielder or something like that, Wielder. -der. Uh, so I'll have to take a look at the cards just to kind of understand what they do uh, off camera. Um, so there you guys have it, it's the first Yu-Gi-Oh! opening. Uh, if you happen to find this channel, welcome. We do a lot of uh, primarily around Pokemon, but we also do Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic. Um, and so if you did enjoy that content, hit that like button, subscribe for future content. I'm a Wanna Turtle, guys, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.